Hello everybody! Welcome to this series of AutoCAD Complete Tutorials for Beginners. Here I am going to solve for exercises that will be a good start for you in the 3D world. In order to help you, I attached in the description a link where you can download the exercises. If you wish, you can try to solve them by yourself first. Let's start! Exercise 1 this first exercise is quite simple, as I just used solid primitives in order to complete it. Before starting, make sure that you are in the Word UCS, WCS. To draw the base of this figure, we are going to use the solid primitive box. Click on the icon, then click anywhere in the workspace to place the first point. Insert the measurements of the face located on the button. For the x-axis, the edge measures 300. Then I press Tab and I insert 200. After that, we need the height. Move up with the pointer and type 20. The box is done. Next, to create this kind of triangle-shaped solid, we are going to use two wedges. To insert a wedge, I click on the arrow under the icon box and find it in this list. I'm going to draw the first wedge. Click anywhere to start the base rectangle. Then I insert the length 20, press tab and then 100. Oh, I failed! The height is not appearing on the side that I desired. The reason is that the height by default appears along the y-axis. But this is not a problem. I can always rotate the UCS coordinates on this side. OK, let's make the same process again. Aha, now it's exactly as I want. Type the height of the wedge, 80. The next step is to use the command mirror. I don't need to use 3D mirror because I want a mirror line on the XY plane. To activate it, type MI and press ENTER. Select the wedge, press ENTER again. For the mirror line, I click on this end point. Then the second point has to be along the Y axis. As I am with the ortho mode on, I don't need to worry with track lines. Finally, click and press ENTER, as I don't want to erase the source objects. OK, I have to place these solids on the box that I drew before. Activate MOVE. Select the objects. Now, this is important. Click on the midpoint of this edge. Then. Ah, I can't move, I am in ortho mode, so I switch to polar tracking here. Then move the objects to this midpoint. Finally, to convert this to a unique solid, use the command union. Select all the solids and press enter. The first exercise is completed. Exercise 2. In this exercise, we are going to use the tool Press Pull and then fill it in a solid. Let's start. First, we are going to draw the base plane. It's a 2D drawing. As this is a symmetric figure, we don't have to draw all the objects. Using the command mirror makes it quicker. I'm going to draw a polyline. First, I draw a line with 100 of length. Just next, I type A and press ENTER to draw an arc segment. Now I click to insert the endpoint of the arc, look at the prompt sentence. It's here. The arc diameter measures 50. The next segment, I type L because I want a line again. Enter 50. Finally, I need another line with length 10. 
I can press escape to exit the command. After, with the command circle, I draw a concentric circle of the arc. It has a radius of 10. On the next step, I'm going to use the command mirror. I select all the objects, press enter, and the mirror line starts from this point, along the y-axis. For the remaining part, I repeat the command again. Select everything. And this time, the mirror line is from this point, along the x-axis. Now I want to add a third dimension here. I can use the command press pull. Place the pointer over the area until it's highlighted. Click. Move the pointer up and insert 40. Press Enter. The last step on this exercise is to use the command fillet to round the edges of the top plane. I activate the command fillet. Select the solid. Sometimes if it doesn't work the first time, try again. For my case, I think it works better on an edge. The fillet radius I want 5. Finally, I need to select all the edges. And at the end, press Enter to finish the solid. Going back, instead of starting clicking on the edges, I can use the option Chain. Type C and press Enter. This allows me to select a tangent edge chain. For example, these objects are tangent between them. And as you see, this way is a bit faster. Exercise 3. Let's play a bit with circles. I don't know what is this kind of structure, but it looks like from a different planet. After all, the important thing here is that you learn a few tips with these exercises. We are going to draw two concentric circles. The first one has a radius of 100. Then, hoof the object and the icon showing the center appears. If you cannot see it, you should turn it on at the Object Snap Modes list. The second circle has 50 of radius. Then, both towers are separated by a distance of 300. I draw a line from this quadrant, that's another Object Snap mode. Here you can find it. If you don't know, the option Quadrant snaps to the points where the Cartesian axes intersect. Type 300 and press Enter. Next, I copy both circles. I choose the quadrant as my base point, then I can place them easily on the other side. On the next step, I extend the line to be from the center of the circles. Then, I'm going to draw a rectangle for the slab. I hold this end point, move along this axis and type 20. Then the opposite corner has to be on this side, again at a distance of 20 from this point. Actually, the important thing is that the segments surpass the inner circle's border. Now I am going to extrude the circles. First, I start with the small ones. I click on both, press Enter, then type 400. I repeat the process for the larger ones. In this case their height is 200. Let's create the slab. Again with the command extrude selected and add 40 for the third dimension. Very good. But of course, the slab doesn't stay on the ground. I have to move it up. Command Move. Click on any point of the solid, move up along the Z axis and type 300. 
On the top of the structure, we need half spheres. It's easy, I'm going to use the solid primitive sphere, hoof the border of the circle, then find the center. Draw the sphere until the quadrant. I can click now. Then I repeat the step to the second tower. So, I have finished, but let's convert this again to a single solid with the command union. Select everything and press enter. Exercise 4 This structure, such as what we did for the exercise 2, we draw first the base objects. I turn on polyline. Then I draw the segments using the ortho mode, as it's faster to draw on the orthogonal lines. Just follow the dimensions on the PDF file. As soon as I reach the half, I press escape, then with the command mirror, I copy the polyline symmetrically to the other side. Now I use the command join to merge both polylines in only one. Nice! On the next step, we will draw all those polylines that look like a kind of labyrinth. A quick way tool here is offset. I type O and press enter to activate the command. I specify 10 for the offset distance. Select the polyline. Then, before proceeding, look at the prompt sentence. It says, specify point or side to offset or these options. I type M to choose multiple. Finally, I move with the pointer inside and click with the mouse three times. As you see, I have set three polylines with the distance of 10 between them. However, the last one was divided into several objects because of the lack of space. To create the solid structures, I'm going to use both press pull and extrude. I start from inside to outside because it's going to be easier to select the objects. I turn on extrude. Select the four squares and the rectangle. Press Enter. Then, specify the height of extrusion, which is 120. For the next sections, I could use Extrude again or press Pull. I click on the area I want to extrude. Move up the pointer and type the height of the solid, 60. Then do the same for the remaining areas. Ah, and it's hard for me to select the area with the snap mode on. I click on its icon to turn it off. This one is 40. And the last 20. Finally, for this solid, we need to use fillet. But this time, I will introduce to you a new ability. We turn on the command. Select the solid. Ah, if I have the selection cycling turned on, this window appears because I have overlapped objects. The solid that I want is the first one. Press enter. Then type the radius of 5. This time, instead of selecting an edge, I use the option loop. With this, I can fillet an entire face of a solid. I select an edge of a loop. Now the system basically asks me if I want this face. If yes, I choose accept, otherwise I click on next and it switches to the other face. As this is the one that I want, I press enter to accept. 
Then I can keep selecting more faces on the same solid. But as I don't want any more, I press enter again to apply the action. Now, all this face has a fillet with radius 5. Ok, thank you very much for watching this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to Cat in Black if you haven't done it yet. Just click in the icon that is shown here. Also, if you need online private lessons, you can send me an email to the address that I show you there. So, it's everything and see you next time!